discussed how the river capturing process take place, the role of global climate change, that is sea level rise, how to have the road erosion process, a river is able to intersect the value of the neighboring and divert that part of streams into its own channel. We call it river capturing. This is an ideal case for interlinking of river. Yes. Yes. Now, capturing is part of a stream by another river and divert that water. This is one river, this is another river, this river by process by headward erosion captures, intercept this river and divert that part of water to its own channel. And this is because of a difference in the gradient of this possible headward erosion. The underlying rocks below it are more softer than this. Therefore, this can extend its valley faster towards a headward. This is initiated by sea level change. Yes, these are all true. This is a process. But how do we say it? If this is the obtuse river bend, generally, if this is a river flowing, if this is a tributary, they join at an acute angle. But if river flows like this, this is not an acute obtuse. They initially flow again to the main direction of river flow. They flow against the direction of main river flow and they take sudden bend, obtuse bend and join. That is a river has an obtuse bend. Entrenching, once the additional water flow starts flowing here, the existing valley may not be adequate. Therefore, they have to cut deeper to accommodate additional water. That is entrenching. In the process, there is a nick point that is there may be in the river like this some sudden change in that additional water comes, additional entrenching, additional erosion and waterfall etc. or sudden change in the gradient we call nick points are there. Multicyclic valley means a river was flowing like this and this is another river. Now that diverted, additional water is flowing. So, original river cross section like this. Now, the river cross section like this means within the valley they trench, entrench deeper. So, this is multi-cycle valley. This is one valley or uh, this is another valley. Valley in valley form we can call multi-cycle before capture, after capture the river gradient is different. Valley in valley form in capturing stream, the river which has captured the other. Now, this was the river which has captured, this is capturing, this is captured. Originally, this water was also there, this therefore river has carved a wide valley perhaps here. Now, when this much of water is diverted, today that much of water is not flowing, we find very little less flow but very wide valley. We call it misfit or underfit. So, for a very little discharge, very wide valley, it is do not match underfit their characteristics in this valley. Wide valley or less flow in a captured stream. And this is the wind gap. What is that wind gap? If this is the river. This is the river and it is diverted like this and henceforth the river flows here, this water flows here, in between there is no flow, only a valley like but no flow at all, we call wind gap. Such kind of features in this area we find. Now these are all a message for us, can we go for construction of interlinking of rivers like this, this is one. Now, we also use the river basin for many programs like artificial recharge. What are the suitable conditions, what are the methods of artificial recharge we shall go. Now, 
if a river has a dendritic drainage pattern throughout the basin it uniform geological condition means whatever you construct it is immaterial everywhere condition is suitable means we spread the water and make it to percolate uniform geological condition is indicated by dendritic drainage pattern and there we prefer flooding method or spreading method as a recharge if we have such structural control a river is flowing along the fracture if i construct a dam and confine the water to store only in the river valley it percolates only in those zone that is a nala band or check dam is ideal check dam is to check sediment in fact better word is a nala band nala band is an ideal method of harvesting structure wherever there is a structural control means river flows on a more or less straight path indicated by structure and below it yes contour bands also we construct is a kind of rainwater harvesting in a mountainous area we have tributaries flowing small first order low order and we can construct a bund like and make water to stand and percolate contour bund involve construction of a small embankment or bunds across the hill slope contour trenches are rainwater harvesting structures it can be constructed on a hill slope as well on a degraded and barren wasteland in both high and low also ditch and ponds along the hill slope if we have a ditch and make the water to percolate a stand excess water flows and here it can percolate ditch and ponds is another method contour bunds ditch and ponds are also other methods of rainwater harvesting depending on the topography and the drainage condition so river erodes what are the different methods to control river erosion we said there river erosion now check dam is one contour bunds is another these are different methods dual purpose artificial recharge as well as soil erosion but there are specific activities exclusively for that is a retaining wall in a especially road side we have seen hill slope sliding and blocking the road if we construct a retaining wall we not only prevent the soil but also protect the road landslides that is a dual purpose retaining wall help not only to check the soil erosion plus our landslide prevention and road safety vegetation and land cover especially in the steep slope hilly areas soil erosion is also there now vegetative cover and land cover serves a dual purpose the role of vegetation we know it increases the moisture content increases the cohesiveness of the soil and roots they hold the soil and as a result soil erosion is prevented plus due to vegetation velocity of the water is checked water flows slowly therefore it finds time for percolation artificial recharge as well as soil erosion both are controlled another is a terracing hilly area water flows away it carry the soil as well as water flows no percolation if on the other hand we do like this terracing instead of one single slope we make the water to stand check their velocity when the velocity is checked their soil carrying capacity is also checked when the velocity is checked it flows slowly it has more time for percolation terracing is another factor where both soil erosion and artificial recharge both take place so that is another wonderful program friends so far what we have discussed is all about the upland where erosion river interlinking everything yes wonderful now river join the sea 
where it joins the sea, that we call lower part of the river coast, we call coast. Along the coast also certain types of landforms are formed and their type of engineering activities differs. What kind of engineering activities in the coastal landform, how it is different from upland? Upland we construct a dam, we do not go for construction of dam in the lowland. Yes, upland we go for erosion control. Here do we have soil erosion, we call coastal erosion, but kind of structure we construct is different. The kind of engineering is different and here do we go for water harvesting, blocking, it is saline water, can we make them to percolate, where we have to construct, if at all anything well beyond the tidal effect, tidal ingress, tidal limit. Therefore, coastal landform management is a different than the landform management in the upper course or middle course. So, watershed management or engineering, everything is different here. Therefore, coastal landform deserves a special mention and attention. Friends, now this is the, we have a beautiful platform, wave cut platform. Now, in the coast, especially in front of the, the say headlands, etc., we may have plain land built. And this plain land is in many ways, is an attraction. Attraction very close to the sea, construction of an attraction. I, we, can we construct some structure like a resort? Yes, wonderful. That become a recreation center. Many recreation centers are ideal for in and around the wave cut platform, but what kind of, how we go ahead about this? This landform attracts, but an engineering activity is different. This is wave cut platform, resorts, coastal recreation, etc. is ideal, but it is a saline water, maritime climate, the material we use in our construction, life of the building, and everything should differ. This is another, you have heard Murdeshwar. Yes, once upon a time it was an island, got connected to mainland. This is not Murdeshwar. I give you Murdeshwar photo differently. So, there is an island and this island got connected to mainland. This process we call Tambolo. This is another attractive area for recreation, building, resort, so many things. So, certain attractive landforms are developed by coastal process and those landforms become center of engineering activities. Yes, this is Om Beach, the same one which I have showed. Yes, these are some of the near shore islands. Once upon a time, perhaps the coast was here, means and these were the sea till here, this was some small island like. Now they got connected to mainland by process called Tambolo formation. We call, this is a Murdeshwar, this was an island, this was the sea and by natural process deposition took place here and this island got connected to mainland Tambolo formation. This is another attraction. The very landform, the coastal features what we find in shallow water, a kind of ripple mark. These are all indication, this sign boards of some kind of activity. What is that sign board? There is a shallow water, there is a deposition. This deposition may develop somewhere this kind of structure, etc. Now these are all attractive for recreation center. How Tambolo? Connection of mainland and the near shore island. There are waves coming, waves coming. This island obstructs the waves, therefore there is no wave activity, wave shadow area. Once it is a wave shadow area, it is a site of a deposition. And by deposition, shallow features can be formed. And these are all indication, shallow water feature. 
and because of this one day it may get connected to the main land and once it is connected to the main land connection is established and therefore we can develop is one way and because of this waves are diverted waves are diverted and low energy created that favors deposition thus wave shadow area wave divergence create a low energy condition a low energy condition facilitate a deposition by deposition mainland and island get connected that becomes and tambolu a site of attraction in the coastal belt om beach is the center of tourist attraction near gokarna murdeshwar and there are several other places yes now what are the coastal landforms we have mentioned those on the beach and in the vicinity of river mouth there are different types of landforms we develop this is a long beach this is a spit this is the river across the river this is the river across the river the sand bed get deposited they affect two way one is obstruct the river flow low velocity and low energy zone therefore that is a sedimentation one and this may force the river to migrate if this can grow farther river is pushed that side there's a different land from this we call the spit and we have the silt bed or accumulation of material may take place we call siltation or uh, uh, mud bank formation we have these uh, different types of land from this is the spit formation now these are all this and these are small island like you see once upon a time the shoreline was here now the shoreline is here it this much is eroded once upon a time shoreline this is moving that side thus thus river migration take place what is the kind of engineering activity is required if river is migrating one is you feel like construction of a bank or a wall like so that it is not further eroded this will not further shift therefore here also a kind of wall tend to restrict this otherwise if this continues continues today i have a jetty here tomorrow river is flowing here i have to construct a jetty tomorrow river flowing here i have to construct a jetty what happens to the jetties and if it is constantly eroding what will happen to that property this are all some of the problem kind of engineering is different the sediments may deposited here they may deposited here and valley is filled navigation is problem these are some of the landforms we get in the river mouth you see depending on the process this just now i have said a sand bed is deposited across the river this is the river flowing across that a sand bed is deposited we call spit that forced the river to migrate and there's a narrow valley all the sediments get deposited this is another kind of landform we call spit this this is a wide beach and here they have constructed a breakwater that is sediment coming from this or from this they tend to restrict them and constructed therefore once a barrier is constructed sand movement is protected and therefore wide beaches are developed all sands get accumulated this is a lagoon a natural sand bed deposited between the sea and the river and a, this act as a barrier therefore the sea do not cut the erosion and only during high tide or somewhere water enters they develop a lagoon and here is the sea erosion or natural process of wave action is prevented erosion is controlled that extent this is a coastal erosion severe erosion problem we have and this kind of structure we can take to prevent erosion bombay common now this is another kind of landform see in this this is a headland 
this is a curvature. What happens? You see, natural process here differs from landform to landform. Landforms are the result of waves and tidal process and sedimentation. In turn, the waves and tidal process are governed by the landform. Example, here you see the waves. Now, this is the headland. This is the, like this, wave shadow area and wave direction here, approach here, here is a different. At here, the waves are like this, they start erosion, this, they may erode, they may deeper, deeper or protect, like that, depend on the nature of waves. It means we have bay type developed, this is the headland, long beaches, erosion, etc. It varies from place to place depending on the landform and the wave process. That deserves some discussion. Is that it? Now, example. This is a sandbar deposited in front of the river mouth we call submerged bar. We have submerged bar, we have submerged bar. What happens? We have submerged bar. If waves are coming like this, they divert the waves. Once wave energy is diverted, here it is low energy zone, it is developed. The moment it is a low energy, siltation takes place, sediment accumulation. In one hand, sediment accumulation takes place here because of low energy. Second, because of this submerged bar, waves are diverted, further low energy and depth is so much reduced, free movement of the fishery boats prevented. One. Waves energy is concentrated, they erode. What happens to the eroded material? That has to be transported. Where they get deposited? They cannot deposit. Again, they are high energy. They deposit and they go to low energy where they get deposited. As a result, or oh, they are deposited, 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 deposited. This result in the spit formation. This is a Sharavati river. The originally river was somewhere here, now today is here, means in last 30 years it has traveled 3.8 kilometer. River originally joining here, now shifted here. So originally joining here, now river shifted 3.8 kilometer in 35 years. Imagine how much end means it is cutting this part and depositing here, cutting this part, depositing, cutting this part and depositing here. Now you have one more island. Now once we reach here, if river reaches here, like this, and this also low energy create, island obstruct the waves, low energy behind it, there can be deposition that can form tumble. Yes, we have, here it is happening. It means the submerged bar develop low energy behind it, favor deposition and spit can be formed or sedimentation in the reservoir and in the navigational channel. So that also may lead to tombolo formation. It means one geomorphic process favor lead to another landform development. In the coastal, this is very rapid, rapid landform development to take place along the coastal belt and engineering becoming a challenge. Yes. What exactly that determines coastal erosion and deposition? One is low energy that creates favorable condition for accumulation, but energy is high erosion, that's all. What are the factors of erosion? breaking point of wave, wave, the waves break and what are the characteristics of wave break? Wave grows in size, grows in size, grows in size. Once they break, they release the energy. That energy is available for erosion. So breaking point of wave, wave steepness, how steep waves, how that is wave height 
and uh, wave period, we define wave steepness. Depth of a C, length of patch and sure of the course. That is, if this is the coast, these are the bathymetry, these are the bathymetry, these are the bathymetry underwater. So this is the waves coming, waves coming. If it is very deep here, wave energy can reach here. If it is very gentle because the bottom topography, there is a friction between the waves and the bottom topography. And wave deviate from its original direction, we call wave refraction. Because of wave refraction, wave energy distribution pattern change. And supply of a beach material, if there is no sand in this, erosion takes place. If there is enough sand, erosion stops. How? We will shortly discuss. Supply beach material. Then beach width, longer, wider beach or shorter, narrow beach. What is the rocks along the coast? All these determine the shoreline erosion, coastal erosion. Now I give an example. I have also discussed it. So now several cases I present. Just now I have mentioned wave refraction. This is, you see, the interference of waves you find. And these are all because of submerged bar, low energy, sand accumulation, etc. is taking place, silt or sand and the spit growth and the river mouth is narrowed, originally river mouth, now it's so much of narrow. Therefore, all sediments get accumulated because of a specific wave refraction pattern. This is a satellite image. Now, I am trying to explain this. We have a submerged bar. This is a headland, a long coast. What happens? For example, here this is a headland. Bathymetry depth is very less, means wave energy can come close to the land and they break and they get concentrated. What is wave convergence example? If a wave is moving like this, waving, wave is moving like this, perpendicular direction of wave motion, if I consider a line. For all mathematical purpose, we consider a line, we call orthogonal. Orthogonal means for direction of wave propagation, we, that is orthogonal. Perpendicular waves, we draw a line. So, wave orthogonal is the direction of wave coming. These are all wave orthogonal, we can say. Now, these waves here, they converge, they converge wave piling take place, high energy take place. So, high energy waves are concentrated here. In that, bottom contours are close to each other, depth is more. Waves converge, wave piling take place, high energy waves result. As a result, and high energy, their ability to erode is one. Once wave piling takes place, height is more. From high energy zone, they tend to flow towards the low energy zone. So from here onwards, flow starts. That is, that is called we have a long shore current, wave bend, wave bend, and they at an angle to the shoreline, they bend, and therefore a long shore current along the coast current moves, they carry sediments we call longshore current. This is a longshore drift. Longshore drift. These are called wave orthogonal. Along in the vicinity or in front of a headland, there is a wave convergence take place. That's a headland. All waves are concentrated and here there is no other effect, waves move like this as a result of wave divergence take place. Wave divergence is the place where low energy waves, no waves, it means it is a site of sedimentation. Here there is a low sedimentation. Again here wave divergence, wave divergence, they tend to move away. 
here also they tend to move it again erosion high energy this eroded material either move this way either move this way if they move this way they deposit here they deposit here like this splits are formed so in front of the river mouth wave divergence take place a low energy siltation it means because of a wave refraction pattern low energy high energy zone is developed and whenever waves approach at an angle to the coastline along shore drift no wave convergence wave divergence along shore drift are the result of specific wave refraction what is refraction it is a wave bending waves coming from if these are the bathymetry if this is the shore line the waves coming from this deep water depth on reaching they undergo refraction on reaching this they a refraction they should have reached the shore line like this but due to change in their direction they reach the coast at an angle they should have reach it perpendicular but they reach uh, the coast at an angle this process is called re wave refraction bending deviation in the direction of wave propagation from deep water to shallow water in this process what happens they interact they undergo friction with the bottom topography when there is a friction with the bottom topography there is a change in wave modification not only the direction their speed period also changes one waves start growing wave length on this is the wave length they decreases as they come to shallow water they it becomes like this means wave length decreases wave height increases wave length decreases wave height decreases wave period therefore changes a high energy waves can hit a given re area because of wave refraction originally though in a deep water wave initial height was 1 meter by the time they reach at the coast it may be 2 meter 3 meter like that so there is a increase in wave height obviously high energy there is a speed a change therefore and direction also as a result a high energy waves come and hit the coast this process is called wave refraction basically governed by the deep water wave height initial direction initial direction is this or they may like this if initial direction this they may like this initial direction of waves initial wave height initial period if initially 1 meter by the time it they come here it may be 3 meter initially 2 meter it may be 4 meter initially half meter it may be 1 meter like initial water depth is important then the bottom contours if there farther less deviation very close deviation may be different thus bottom contour is another which determines the direction as a result of initial wave height initial direction bathymetry and orientation of the coast waves reach the coast at an angle they may converge they may diverge etc thus energy distribution vary high energy at wave convergence wherever wave converge high energy low energy wherever wave divergence along shore where wave is at an angle or from the point of convergence away from it we have the along shore current they carry the material this basic knowledge is important for coastal engineering now these are some of the different coastal structures we find this is rock armor rip rap randomly dumped rock materials we find in some part of the coast so large boulders that is dumped on all along in coastal karnataka mangalore etc these are common so they are able to dissipate the wave energy reflect the wave energy break the wave energy distribute the wave energy 
by absorbing the impact of a waves. Riprap structure do not suffer from the wave score and affect the sea walls. Sorry, affect the sea wall. Clearly, masses of boulders are much cheaper than any other uh, concrete materials, etc. Locally available material, but properly if located. However, they are pretty unappealing. Aesthetic beauty of the shore is lost. Recreational attraction is lost, etc. So they are also act as a groin and can prevent downdrift. These are some of the advantages and disadvantages depending on the nature of the coast condition, wave energy, etc. Now, just now I previously explained these, uh, these Yes, this is because of continuous shift, they have constructed a sea wall, but that sea wall has suffered now, you find. Though we have constructed a sea wall, because of continuous push force from the river, from because of spit growing, the sea wall collapsed. So, in one side there was a long shore drift, we did not prevent it. The other side we have constructed, that is not a permanent solution. So, therefore, at one point we have to take the spit is growing, we have to protect the spit growth, check the spit growth. On the other side we have to construct it. Then only our structure become more stable, otherwise the erosion like this. Erosion of the beach is adjacent to river mouth. Construction of seawall does not serve the purpose unless we also protect the spit and check this pretty growth. Construction of groin, wave breaker here. We have constructed a wave breaker on either side of the river mouth. If this is the river flowing like this, if this is the coast, if we have constructed a groin like this, all wave breakers, along shore drift we can prevent. This spit formation we can prevent. When the spit formation is prevented, migration of river is prevented, this kind of failure can be checked. Therefore, a groin like, uh, this is the river flow like this, if we construct a structure like this, that can help to prevent construction of groin. It's also called a wave breaker, wave energy to control. These structures are also constructed. Offshore breakers are also constructed. For example, if this is the sea, if this is the land cross section, here if I submerge the structure, then because of this uh, wave energy is controlled, wave breaking is controlled, therefore low energy waves hit the coast. Because of this structure we call offshore break. Sea walls are constructed on the land, offshore breakers at some depth, offshore breakers to damp wave energy. And along the, if here, somewhere here, this is the river, this is the coast, for easy movement of the fisheries vessels, for fish landing jetties, vessel to stop and operate, we call a fish landing jetty or simply jetty. Our ports are also facilitate to big ships like dumping, undumping, transport material from here to here through small vessels, etc. We construct jetties and ports and that is another engineering. What are the conditions favorable? How long it has to function? It should not be, there should not be any deposition, siltation, there should not be any erosion, etc. Some of these are very critical for us. Therefore, fish landing jetty or jetty construction is required in the coastal belt and this is different than the construction on the land. For example, on the land we may construct an embankment like or some concrete structure, the, in the coast it is a corrosive nature. It is a silt, saturated condition. 
वाटर अगेन अंडर वाटर फ्लो और कटिंग एवरीथिंग इज देयर सो इट्स ए डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ अ चैलेंज फॉर कंस्ट्रक्शन द लाइफ ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर इज आल्सो डिफरेंट देयरफॉर वी हैव टू हैव ए डिफरेंट इट्स मोस्टली इट्स अ क्ले नॉट हार्ड रॉक व्हाट वी फाइंड ऑन द लैंड देयरफॉर कंस्ट्रक्शन इज डिफरेंट डिपेंडिंग ऑन द लोकल कंडीशन डिपोजिशनल और इरोजनल प्रोसेस एक्सेट्रा this is another challenge yes we have river mouth there is a tidal force during high energy tidal force high tide current may flow like this during falling tide they may flow in different path you see this part this part this part this part etc are different means siltation in the river mouth is in addition to waves tidal forces during high tide sediments can move into the river and depending on the local energy condition they may get deposited during falling tide the sediments may move in a different path they may deposit or they may move in the same path they can erode it so this process is governed by tidal force what is the source of sediment now sediment can come from the land upland this one possible source and those sediment distribution is governed by tidal and river force and sediment supply sediments can come from all along the coast and through river mouth they may reach along shore drift and just now we have mentioned some kind of a growing like if that is like say this sand may reach the river to prevent that we may have to construct a growing like that so to prevent along shore current growing is constructed but if sediments are coming from deeper part do we have any control can we construct any structure no then a different mode of operation is required to prevent siltation to understand the mechanism of siltation in the river channel we need to understand not only the wave energy distribution current distribution within the river mouth and the source of sediment quantum of sediment how whether the sediment coming from the offshore is high from the land is high etc nature of sedimentation this is another example orissa chilka lake is an example if you widen the mouth what happens if narrow is the mouth what happens the sediment circulation wave energy distribution rush of water everything is a different if you open the mouth enormous quantity of water can rush in the may be sediments possible mixing of sea water with the fresh water their quality changes electrostatic force of repulsion or attraction of the particle settling siltation may change therefore what is exactly the mechanism that is taking place we need to understand therefore under that condition opening of the mouth often help opening of the mouth often do not help depend on the land source or sediment coming from the coast adjacent coast to prevent that growing we have suggested yes if we do not prevent what happens the mud flat this is a clear example if we do not have any kind of sediment prevention process coming from the land siltation for that sediment trap well behind the high water reach or tidal reach constructed we call sediment trap that is one way to prevent sediment coming into the estuary this one way. but if sediments are coming from along shore growing is a method if sediments coming from the offshore it just now we said a different so mud flats are 
the depositional feature of the navigational channel that is because siltation that is to be prevented. If they are non-vegetated, yes, they become migratory often. Today here, tomorrow here, tomorrow here. Just now we have shown here in different, these islands, these are all migrating, this white, those are all migrating here and there. See here, here, the size of this, here you see. Thus, they may migrate. If they are stabilized by vegetation, if they are, then it is different. Thus, all these features determine the engineering activities in the coastal belt, that is the siltation and erosion along the coast. And these are basically governed by the wave energy and the tidal currents, which in turn are modified by landforms. Certain landforms, say submerged bar, formation is determined by wave action. And further wave convergence, divergence is determined by sub, this um, uh, submerged bar. It means in the coastal climate, landform and process are complementary to each other. In the upland, it is in a different scale. Process determine the landform. Here, landform and process are complementary to each other. Therefore, coastal landform provides a challenge for engineering. Yes, this is another. So, wherever beach is undergoing rapid erosion, beach nourishment is one process. We bring the material from outside and spread on the beach. Now, I have a gentle beach, I have a steeper beach, I have a narrow beach, I have a wide beach. It differs wherever I have a wide beach, there is a sand bed, wave flow, that wave energy is dissipated because sand bed is porous and permeable, wave energy percolate and wave return wash is very weak, it do not carry sediments. Beaches are not eroded, it get deposited. On the other hand, wherever there is a steep, water flows with certain velocity also carries sediments and there is a shoreline erosion. So, it all depends on. Therefore, a narrow beach width means wave energy is not completely lost, not completely dissipated. Therefore, erosion continues. Wide beach and narrow beach. Steeper beach, return wash is also strong. Gentle beach, waves move up, return wash is weak, water percolates and that build the beaches. <coughs> Wherever there is a narrow beach, beach nourishment process, that is bringing sediments on from somewhere and dump it on the shore. That is a beach nourishment. This is an example of Miami Beach in USA where so much of materials are dumped and beach development has taken place. But engineering is involved. What is that engineering example? If I have studied a beach during monsoon, what is the size of the material? During post monsoon, what is the size of the material? And during this much, how much beach change has taken place, beach volume has taken place? That I try to understand. One, during monsoon, we have found in a beach the dominantly it is a size of 1.5 or 1.8 millimeter and a larger coarser. During other season, it is smaller than 1.5 or smaller like that. It means the size of the material is matter. I have to check what is that. If during monsoon, this is the size of the material left and finer materials are washed. This is the critical material. Then coarser than that, if I bring back, that get, do not get eroded. I repeat, during monsoon on the beach, if I have a sand of 1.5 mm diameter, example, 
coarser than that if i bring they do not get eroded during other season post monsoon october november december january february march i may have particles less than 1.5 mm that is 1 mm 0.75 mm these are fine particles if i bring fine particles obviously next monsoon they get eroded therefore i have to see coarser than the coarsest sand i find on the beach if i dump beach can be stable because waves cannot erode that material their energy is that much therefore sand pumping a kind of beach nourishment process is another engineering solution in addition vegetation also people practice with this in the coastal belt we can protect our the land and go ahead with the construction activities thank you friends